it is come on uh oh you gotta get come on come on buddy yeah look at that hey I know they're the bad ones all right so, you know what the candy cane represents? Do you? You know what it's shaped like? It's shaped like a shepherd's staff. And God shepherds over us. It says in Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. <laughs> I'll get you guys another one later. If you notice the white, the white in the candy cane represents purity. Christ was pure. <sighs> if you notice the red it means that he shed his blood for us these things are symbolic of God's love for us and as we get together and we celebrate Christmas it's looking at Jesus he is the reason for this season so why do I share this with you because Christmas is more than gifts Christmas is eternal life because of Jesus Christ you know that you know what happens if the world ends tomorrow, you still have Jesus. You know, what, you know what happens if you get in trouble with your parents? You still have Jesus. <laughs> and you know what happens if your parents get in trouble? 
well, hopefully they have Jesus or they need Jesus because this life is all about Jesus one way or another, right? So I just want to share that with you guys that Jesus is the reason for the season. So as you look at the candy cane and you get to, you get to taste it, and it's just more candy that you get this time of year, remember what it represents. It represents Jesus. So let's pray. Father, I just thank you for these kids. And may you radically touch them and transform their lives. May you keep them from the evil of this world. May they grow up knowing you and confessing you. And may you use them in a mighty way. We thank you for them. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. You can go back to your seats. Before we um, get started in our next section of worship, after the first of the year, we will once again be providing children's ministry in the trailer. Um, <laughs> we stopped short just because of some of the people were getting sick, and we just didn't want to pass it on. If you know this, kids, don't stop. When you tell them, hey, don't touch so-and-so and don't hang out with, you know how kids are, right? Yeah. Like I told you before, Cindy used to carry like the the big Lysol cans. It used to be like a gun and she'd pull it out. (laughs) But once again, after the first of the year, we will be providing children's ministries once again. And um, please, let's build this thing up again. I, I, I love the kids. And like we said here before, kids make a little noise. The parents are trying to deal with it. We support that. If we don't have any noise, that means we don't have any kids, and I don't like that. How many guys are blessed by being around kids? You know, don't they lift up your spirit? Don't you see yourself in them? When they're naughty, understand that you're naughty too? We need Jesus. So with that, if our worship team can come back, let's worship the Lord. Most of you remember these words. We haven't sang them for like a year. But we sing them every year. But we do.
gifts we bring. Oh, rum pa pum pum. Too late before the King. Oh, rum pa pum pum. Rum pa pum pum. Rum pa pum pum. So to honor Him. Oh, rum pa. house to house, singing Christmas carols. You know, what a memory. Yes. It just, it just came to me. It just, I love those times. Oh.
Thank you. Mike, can you grab that light, please? All right. What are we going to be talking about today? Jesus. Jesus. That's right. We're going to talk about celebrating Jesus. The title of this message is Celebrate Jesus. This message is going to come from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. Luke was a physician, and Luke wrote later on, um, after the other, some of the other uh, apostles and the other writings came out, and Luke gives some of the life of Jesus in details. Now, if you're a physician, you're always looking at details. And so Luke gives some of the details of the birth of the Christ that some of the other Gospels do not give. In this, we get a better picture of Jesus. Now, this term, celebrate Jesus, comes from the shepherds in the story. The shepherds were told to go celebrate Jesus. And just uh, some house cleaning things. If you have your phone, please turn it on silence or off, please, so we don't get any emergencies in the middle of service. Also, if we can limit our distractions, when the word of God gets powerful, then the enemy rises up. If we can remove our contributions, then maybe that person who's right next to you that needs it most can receive it. Okay? So Luke is giving us some details that the others don't get, and we are talking about celebrating Jesus, and that comes from the angels revealing Jesus to the shepherds. All right? So Luke chapter 2, verse 1. And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This census first took place while Quinarius was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. <clears throat> to be registered with Mary, his wife, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there was in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone all around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you, this day in the city of David, a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. So it was when the angel, angels had gone away, from them into heaven that the shepherds said to one another let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass which the Lord had made known to us and they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger now when they had seen him they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child and all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told by the shepherds but Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they heard and seen as it was told them. And when eight days were completed for the circumcision of the child, his name was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. This is a Christmas story. The Christmas story is about the birth of Christ. The birth of Christ is the fulfillment of Old Testament prophecy. So this is an important thing. Some other religions um, that come out of Christianity really don't observe Christmas, but they're not observing the truth that Jesus came in the flesh. I'll get to that in a second. But this is the fulfillment of Old Testament prophecy. This is how important this event is. 
For when Adam and Eve sinned and they were cursed, God gave them a prophecy right away and told Eve, out of you is going to come one to restore everything. Out of Eve would come this child that would bring order back to us and bring a relationship back to us with God. So Jesus' birth is the fulfillment of several Old Testament prophecies. Now, Jesus couldn't decide. You know, say, well, Jesus tried to make these things happen. Jesus couldn't decide where he was going to be born. He was born, as it says in Micah, in Bethlehem. Jesus couldn't decide how he was born. He couldn't decide the clothes that his mom would put on him. He couldn't decide any of those things. And yet it came to pass just as it was prophesied. And prophecy reveals the reality of God. So, some of these prophetic pit stops along the way. Isaiah 7.14. It says that he, the virgin, shall conceive and bear a son. And his name shall be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. And then John says, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Whoa. Whoa. How about Isaiah 9, 6? It says, For us, to us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And I, Isaiah is very specific in what this child should be named. Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. So this prophecy is not just that a child would come. This prophecy is that God would come and live like us. Come on. So this birth it's going to rock the world. It brings God into the world to set us free. Wow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If I can, Mike, can I get you to shut off the fans, please? All right. Isaiah 9, 6. For unto us a child is born. For unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called. Wonderful. Counselor. Mighty God. The everlasting Father the Prince of Peace. Wow. Think of all those things that Jesus brings. He brings us opportunity. You know that? He brings to us good things. You know God doesn't give us bad things? Sometimes we see it as bad. You know, I don't know about you, but I struggle with life, and I think, why did you let me have this, God? This thing is hurting me. I don't want it. Only those things turn out to be the best things because they change who I am. So, what's the next thing? This is radical. The birth of Jesus emphasizes his humanity. You know how important it is, the humanity of Christ? Ooh. It means that he could come in our likeness. The Bible's talking about the kinsman redeemer. And in Judaism, the kinsman redeemer was somebody who was kin to this person that could take them on and bring them into their home and actually support them. Ooh, the next of kin. So if a lady's husband died, the next of kin could take her and bring her into his home and provide for her. Jesus is our kinsman redeemer, for he came in our likeness to redeem us and bring us into his home. Man, this is good stuff. You know, he's going to prepare a mansion for you, a place for you to dwell. A place that's specifically with your likes and desires. Because he knows. How does, how does Jesus know what I like? Because he knows me. Because he lived like me. Which is our second main point in the humanity of Christ. He knows what it's like. He knows what it's like to suffer. He knows what it's like to suffer. He knows what it's like to be ridiculed. He knows what it's like to have pain. Unlike anybody else. He knows what it's like to be rejected. So when we're struggling in our life, and we're struggling with the world around us, we have to understand that Jesus knows what it's like. That our God's not removed from us. In the Greek mentality, that their worship system, in their worship system, Greek mythology, their gods were removed from human people. Like, they couldn't relate. But our God can relate. 
The Bible says he was tempted in all ways just like you and me except without sin. So then when I'm going through life, you know how important it is to realize that Jesus knows what it's like? When I suffer loss, don't you know it's important to know that Jesus understands what it's like to suffer loss? When family rejects me, how important is it to know that Jesus knows what it's like when his family rejected him? When his closest friend, one of his closest friends, betrayed him. See, Jesus understands because of his, humi his humanity. It's so important to understand that. So in this, we've got to understand the humanity of Christ. If he didn't take on human flesh, he couldn't identify with us, right? But he also could not take upon our sin. He had to come in our likeness. The Bible says he made him who knew no sin to become sin for us so that we might become the righteousness of God. Come on, church. He replaced my sin for his righteousness. That's a gift, man. You know what? I'm a messed up person. You guys might think I'm good, but you don't know. Just ask my wife. She'll tell you. She'll tell you that, that, that what's between my ears is not always... Uh, godly. The only reason why I'm here is because of Jesus. He makes it godly. He changes my way of thinking. He changes my actions. You know, there's times where I'm so me-centered, I don't pay attention to anybody else. Like this week, I'm going to, because she's here, I have to say it. So we're down the hill, and I'm thinking about me. When's Cindy getting out of the dentist? When am, what are we going to go next? And we, she gets out of the dentist, and she looks at me, and she goes, we're going someplace. I'm like, where are you going? She goes, we're going to go see Cindy Kelly. So we walk into Cindy Kelly's office, and her, and her reception is like, well, she's kind of busy. And we're like, well, Pastor Kevin's here. She goes, wait, she needs to see you today. And Cindy's in with the client, comes out, and the Oh, man, it was priceless. She comes out, and she sees us, and then the tears start flowing, and we got to pray. And I looked at my wife, and I'm like, I'm glad you heard from God today. <laughs> but this is the humanity of God. He sent us there because God knows what we need, and he supplies all that we need because he knows what it's like to live in this world. The humanity of Christ is so important. We often think he's our heavenly father. God can't relate. He's so removed because we're living in a sinful state. But yet Jesus came and shed his divinity for a time. He shared his prerogative for a time. He was always God, but he just set aside his calling, and it's a hard thing to describe, in order to relate to you and me. That means God cares. That means God cares for me. Not just you. But me, you know how important it is to realize that? That God cares for me. You know, if I was the only one on this earth, Jesus would have still died for me. Man, this is good stuff. This is the stuff we need to be reminded of over and over and over again. Because when I look at the world, the world doesn't declare love. The world doesn't declare hope. The world doesn't declare righteousness. The world's trying to get me sucked up into a situation of death, to a lifestyle of death. Yet Jesus could relate because you know what else he did in the flesh? He condemned sin. It says in Romans 8, he condemned sin in the flesh. He took care of it once and for all. So today at 1 o'clock, we're going to celebrate two lives Jim Orcott and Miss Penny as they went on to be with the Lord in celebrating this life I never really saw the parallel before I shared a little bit last week but in celebrating their lives I'm looking at one aspect that declares their reality you know what it is baptism because when we go into the water and we're baptized we're saying that that person that went under the water is in a dead state and that when we come out of the water, we take in a breath of life, which is a symbol of God breathing life into man. We're coming out of the water, a new creation. So when somebody dies, their body is in a dead state. Their sin is in a dead state. And now they come out a new creation forever in the glory of God. 
Wow, what a parallel. What a purpose. Come on. And Jesus came for you. I love this. This is how important the humanity of Christ is. John says, every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus has come in the flesh is from God. Every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. He says, is of the Antichrist. You and I need to realize that God came into the world because if Jesus didn't come into the world, we are still in sin and we are still separate from God. That's how important the birth of Christ is. Oh, it's not just we're celebrating it in a worldly fashion. Do you know all those things that we're celebrating around the birth of Christ? We hear from the world all the time that it's pagan, right? Sorry, this is not a pagan symbol. Do you know the tree is not a pagan symbol? It's an evergreen. It means forever. The wreath is in a circle. It means endless. Do you know these things are put before us so that we can correctly worship and glorify God? What were the shepherds told to do? They were told to go celebrate Jesus. Go make a big deal out of the birth. Wow, I think we should do something with this thing called Christmas. We should right the wrong and we should do it right. It's awesome. Jesus became a nobody so we could be a somebody. These angels didn't go to the religious elite. They didn't go to the famous. They went to the shepherds, the despised, and they said, Come, be the first to see the King of kings and the Lord of lords. God didn't separate himself just to a specific group of people. He said that there would be glory and, and peace and goodwill towards men, all men. Jesus revealed, was revealed to these shepherds before he was revealed to anybody else. And I like that because I was a nobody. I was rejected and despised. I still struggle with it from time to time. So do you. Yet Jesus came to identify with me so that I could be a somebody with him. That's one thing I love about the church that he set up. We get a new start. We can become different than we've ever been before. The Holy Spirit empowers us to live differently, to live radically, to live inspired, to live transformed. Come on. And that is because Jesus revealed himself to us. You know, I, I like what John Corson says. Christ came to the bottom feeders. He says, you know, he came, he came to those who were the lowest, who weren't well off, who had problems, who had difficulties, and he revealed himself to them so that they can be transformed and live in his presence and live in his glory. You might be a nobody now, but you know you're a somebody to God. For God so loved the world that he what? He gave. Man, this is good, man. I've, I've, me and Jack were talking. And yesterday, if you didn't know it, me and Jack were, me, Jack, Frank, and Ernie, and Carolyn, we went and set Norm's headstone, Norm Whipple. And it's beautiful. It was about 600 pounds. Oh, yeah. Little dolly, couple boards, couple boards breaking underneath the weight, a lot of shifting, maneuvering, and we got it set in place. And let me share something with you. We were treated so well. We were treated so well by that. It's unbelievable. They, 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 Jack tells me, I goes, I can't believe how nice they were. I said, you know what that it was? You know what that was? Because I prayed over everything. That was church. Do you know it's more beautiful to hang out with people of God that understand without Jesus there are nobody than it is to go with church leaderships that think there is somebody without him? Yeah. So I, it's one of those things where I'm, uh, I, I'm constantly reminded that he does everything for me. He does everything for me. And when I put myself into his hands, I'm free. 
You know the biggest problem? Ready? Is me. The somebody he's creating is to release me from the nobody. To release me from condemning myself. How many guys have condemned yourself so much you can't get back past it? From the condemnation of other people. From, from the failures. And from how many times I thought the wrong thing only to be proven right. You know? How many times I saw broken promises and how many times I related them to who I was. I shared this with some people down the hill. Do you know in addiction, in addiction, we become the priority, right? And we think the problem is with us personally. And so we begin to label ourselves, right? The problem isn't with us. The problem is, is what we've done, the input of our lives. And here's why. If you change the input, you'll change the output. All it is is comes to my life, then I'll have different results. Come on. And if I line myself up with Jesus Christ and I start doing God's word, then I can expect different results in my life. And Jesus made the way. Jesus made the way. How? I love what it says here. Philippians 2.7 He made himself of no reputation and took on the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Can you imagine being the king of kings and lord of lords? To be in glory in heaven, to be in a place where angels are worshiping you, and to leave it and to come and look like men? Come on. To come and live like us? So what was it like? Let me share something with you. It was like taking a shower and going and putting on dirty clothes. Yeah, come. Yet, that's not even close in the comparison of what he did to come and live like us. So when we want to make ourselves something without him, we're really nothing. But with him, we can make ourselves something. Do you know humility is never putting yourself down? You know what humility is about? It's about lifting him up. The more you lift him up, the more you'll find your place. The, the higher he becomes, the more you become. You don't become less. When you make it about you, you become less. You become less useful. You become less patient. You become less peaceful. You become less. When he becomes more, you become more patient. You become more peaceful. You get joy. You get love. He becomes something. You become more. So what is Jesus? He is the gift. He's like to say, okay, well, it's grace that he brings. Well, we don't get grace without Jesus. Why do we give good gifts? Because God gave his only begotten son. Come on. That's why we give presents. We give. What? We give. I didn't say we look to receive presents. I, say, I said we look to give presents as God gave. So, church, what would, what would our spiritual lives look like if we spent all our time looking to give and wasn't so consumed about how we received come on what if we went to church looking to give and not expecting to receive what if everybody came in here focused on what they could give to God and not what they received in the message what they could give to God and not how the worship went what they could give to God what would it look like if every one of us were more spurred on to give because he gave. This would become the church that he died for. That's true. It's true. We would become the church he died for. But if we don't, if we look to receive, you know what happens? Everything gets manipulated. Everything gets controlled. Why? Because we're going to live God by our experience. How many of us has limited God by our experience? You know, the church isn't a place for you to receive as much as it is a place for you to give. And as you give, then you receive. It's so true. We've got to radically give. We've got to change the way we view this thing. Why? Because God gave. You know, if I'm giving to my wife, she's going to give back. 
If I look to receive, I'm going to put, I'm going to put um, weight on her. I'm going to put burdens on her that she can't live up to, and then we're going to have conflict. I don't know about you, but I don't like my home in conflict. It's not fun, is it? It's not fun trying to be right when you're always wrong. Oh, you think that's bad? I have a 20-year-old that's just as smart and just as opinionated and more stubborn than me. But you know what? When you live in a home where Jesus is centered, he can make all things work together for good. (laughs) Amen. But he is the gift. He is the gift. When I get Jesus, I get it all. It's like this. I I used this description over somebody in here. She began to open this package of grace because she received the gift of Jesus. And the more she opens up this package, the more she discovers all these different gifts that she never thought she had. And it's incredible because now she's opening up this package. Wow, she is gifted in being able to communicate and write. I'm like, wow, you have no idea how gifted you are. She's gifted to play music and she's gifted to be a part. And she never realized that she had all those gifts until she saw Jesus. Until she recognized that when she received him, he gave everything and she could become somebody. from living alone and living separate to being a part of the whole thing. This is incredible. So what gift are you going to open up? He's given you access to everything. He is the gift, but what are you going to discover in your life as a result? That's what I discovered. Do you know I was an introvert? I couldn't talk. And when I did talk, um, I had this country slang way of communicating. It was bad. Like my wife used to tell the kids, don't listen to him. (laughs) You know, I'm like, when are you going to fix me some vittles? I ain't got no learning. I used to talk just like that. And she was telling the kids, don't listen to your dad. You don't want to learn his type of English. (laughs) And I used to make order for me because I was such an introvert. So we'd be at the restaurant and like, Cindy, can can you ask the waitress for more Coke? And, and then all of a sudden, I got a hold of God. And he changed everything. Because then it didn't become about me, it became about him. So when I talk for myself, you'll see a difference. When I talk for myself, it represents all my insecurities. Right? But when I talk for him, I'm not representing me. So I'm free to speak with boldness because of who he is and what he's done. He is the gift. You know what I've discovered? I've discovered this love I never thought I had because I learned to reflect his love. I've shared this with you before. I used to get by in manipulation and anger. That's how I used to live my life. You know, I used to intimidate people. And that's how I thought I could get away with my life. And the same passion I had to do that, God switched and he said, you go love people. Because I'm giving you love. And now I'm able to love people that it's incredible that I never thought I could love. I'm able to have patience that I never thought I could have. I'm able to have this life that's crazy. Crazy. Crazy good. But sometimes just crazy. You know, we were talking yesterday as we were moving Norm's headstone. And some of you guys didn't realize this. But when Norm passed away, we had no way to get his body to the burial site. So it was loaded in the back of my truck. So how many people are going to say, yeah, I've done that? Or I've had this crazy, crazy life, like bucked off of horses, had the horse go over me, have the cow go over me, and come out of it I even got stuck by a deer, the antler. You know, I've had this crazy, I have stories, and people are like, no way, and my wife's like. <laughs> but here's the point. Because of Jesus, surrounded and loved like very few people I know. Hardly anybody I know is genuinely loved like me and my wife. Genuinely. 
with people that the world doesn't think have any value. And if they only see, the world could see you through God's eyes, they'll discover that you are so gifted, you are so loved, and you are so awesome. It's incredible. Me and my wife just get to live in that reflection of the, all this love. You know what it's like when people just show up and go, we were you today. You know what it's like when people say, hey, I, I just wanted to do this for you, and you realize they didn't have anything, but they wanted to give what they had to you. And all we can do is like, thank you, Lord. Do you know what it's like to be able to spend so much time with your love and to continue to be in that relationship. Do you know what it's like to look at people and, and know that their bodies are perishing, but you can't see them in a dead state. You just can't wait for them. You know what it's like? Because I don't walk in there with remorse. I walk in there and this time, but I know when you close your eyes for the last time, when you breathe your breath, last breath, you are in glory forever. You know what that's like? You know what kind of hope that brings? You know what it's like to look at children and say, this one's blessed, this one's blessed, and you can't wait for God to bring out more in them? That's what spiritual life's all about. I like to watch and, and, and see other people get inspired. This is radical. This is radical change. And this is what we need to be living in. It's because of this gift. I know this is, uh, this is a little bit small. I was going to change it. But this is Colossians 2, 16 through 17. It says, let no man therefore judge you in food or in drink or in a holy day or in a new moon or which or in a sabbath which are a shadow of things to come but the substances of Christ you know what he's saying here let no one judge you worship Christmas you're free to worship as long as the substance is Jesus Christ let no one judge what you wear as long as the substance is of Christ. Let no one judge you in the way you talk as long as the substance is of Christ. Let no one judge you in the way you love as long as the substance is of Christ. You know what we are free to do? We are free to love. We are free to love because God loved me. Wow. Wow. So why do I say this? Because Merry Christmas. I didn't say Happy Holidays. I said Merry Christmas. Because I should be inspired to celebrate Jesus just like those shepherds. I should be inspired to live my life and, and, and celebrate this occasion as long as my celebration is around Him. You know, right now, even in our own state, they're trying to get people not to do Christmas. Hey, you can keep me in my home, but it's not going to define how I celebrate Jesus. God's telling you to celebrate Him. And we need to do that in the way that He has designed. You know what? It's not about, it's not about materialism. It's not about presence. It's not about any of those things. It's about Him and sharing Him with those around you. If you guys don't have any place to go, they're going to have a drive-in uh, meal here Christmas Day. If you guys would like to help, please see Terry, and she can direct you. Some of you, and, and, and like Michelle Arvig, she doesn't know I'm going to share this, she helps other people, or like from the heart. They gave over, over 500 gifts on Thursday night. Are you kidding me? You know why? You know why they did? 
because they loved Jesus and they thought it was an opportunity to bring people knowledge of him. And people have come to church through their actions. That's all it's about, is giving people opportunity to receive that gift. I know what it's like because I, I was given the gifts. I was taking them out to cars. And some of those people, you ought to have seen their face because they didn't have anything to give. And yet you're helping them make sure their kids know that they are loved. That's what Jesus did, right? He came and gave himself to know or to show and illustrate the point that we are loved. We are loved by God. That's how we celebrate Christmas. I don't celebrate Christmas in the way the world does. I celebrate Christmas in the way God desires me to. It's lifting up Jesus. This day, we celebrate his birth. We don't know the specific day, but the day we celebrate it, we should celebrate it with all our hearts. How did he come into the world? He didn't come into the world high and mighty as a baby in swaddling clothes stuck in a manger and yet he provided his life for us this is radical I love this this is a quote from Corey Ten Boom Corey Ten Boom wrote a lot of material uh, about the Holocaust and this is what she said who can add to Christmas? The perfect motive is that God so loved the world. The perfect gift is that he gave his only son. The only requirement is to believe in him. The reward of faith is that you shall have everlasting life. From somebody who is enduring hardship like we'll never know. And what was her view? That this child was the gift. And this time is a time to celebrate Jesus and let's lift him, his name as the name above every name. Because eventually every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. He has given us this gift himself. How are you going to celebrate it? How are you going to celebrate it? That is the question. Not only today, but how are you going to celebrate Jesus in your life? You know, I'm not, because of Jesus, I'm living a different life. Because of Jesus, I need to live transformed. Live serving him and loving him and loving other people. How are you living for Jesus? I would imagine right now there's some people being convicted. And you need to take heed to that conviction. It's time to start new. And so there's people watching. And you're out there either watching live or you're going to watch down the road. And you have questions in your life because you're not finding much of a gift anymore. Because this world's offering something that doesn't pay out. And right now, you need to receive Jesus. It comes from belief. So repeat after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I repent of my sin. I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior. Give me your Holy Spirit to live for you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that here in person or online and you believe in your heart, the Bible says that you are saved. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. If you are saved, the center of your life around the gift, which is Jesus. Live your life from a heavenly perspective and watch your life be full. Watch your life have meaning. That is the purpose. So with that, if I could have our ushers come forward, we're going to take up our offering.
Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for what you're doing. We pray for radical transformation in us. We pray that you would heal us, make us whole. And we pray that we would begin to celebrate you like never before. Lord, open our eyes, open our lives up to your direction. Bless us as we give, and may you take and multiply it for your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. For those who uh, want to know our online schedule this week, uh, we will be online as normal for Tuesday night, uh, for Wednesday night prayer. Mike has people reading out of Luke until... New Year's Eve, which we shall close in Christmas Eve, I'm sorry. We should close in Luke 24. And uh, Cindy and I will probably go uh, online, probably record it, but maybe live Christmas Day just for a little small message of thank you and appreciation and God's love. So once again, our normal schedule will be here. We have bread, okay. And please don't forget, we have bread in the back. Please take the bread home with you and uh, it's a tremendous gift if you guys have never received it there's Dave's seed bread in there usually and it's really good bread so what a blessing what a blessing to many people um, before we close in worship I just want to share this and, and you can go ahead and, and, and kill the video the box will be on Wednesday